Hi guys and welcome back to Studio One with me Gregor. So today we want to look at comping which has become industry standard as a workflow over the years. Basically instead of letting a vocalist or an instrumentalist record the entire performance in one take, you let them record sections over and over again and then from those multiple attempts you comp the perfect take that is so flawless they could have never done it in one take otherwise. So let's look at how this works in Studio One and I hope you enjoy. All right, so before we start out with the comping and layer workflow that's so beautiful and fast in Studio One, it would be best if we would first map out three hotkeys in total uh, before we get going because they're gonna really speed up your workflow. So just click on Studio One, keyboard shortcuts, and type in the word replace. You're gonna find two hotkeys here, replace event with next layer and replace event with previous layer. Please just map these to a key command that you can memorize easily and remember. Maybe if you have like a multi-button mouse, you can also map it to that. Studio One gives you all of the liberties and freedoms in that regard. And then there's also a third one that's kind of handy, which is add layer. If you need to add multiple layers at once, this is just a very fast way of doing so. Also, if you need to add layers on a more regular basis, I would strongly advise you to take a look at the macro toolbar over here then switch to the audio editing page and there you're gonna find add five layers at once at the click of one single button. Okay, so once we've taken care of that, uh, we click on this little cogwheel down here where it says record panel and ensure that taste to layers is activated. What this does is ensure that every time we're recording a new take as um, our section is looping, these are stored as layers automatically in our track so we don't have to um, expand all these takes manually. So in order to get a better understanding of what this looks like visually, let me just record um, a bar of me blabbing into the microphone so you get a visual representation of what these takes look like. Okay, so we're in a recording situation and we're recording, this is take one, now we're going take two, that's take three, and here's take four. Now I hit stop and you see thanks to takes to layers, I got all of these four performances right here. Now you might say, why do I see five recordings, didn't we only do four? Yes, but in Studio One, we think that the result of your comping should always be at the very top and it should be visible at all times. Think of it as a visual representation of what you're comping and once you're done with your comping, um, you can just close these layers, collapse them and merge or bounce this file and then treat this like any other event. And should you ever need to consult these layers again, you just click on this little button here, expand layers, and you make your adjustments as necessary. Notice how the color coding makes it really easy to see which of the layers is currently being promoted to the top. So you get used to it very, very quickly. And I for one really appreciate that I always know the status of my edits by just looking at the top of the event part. All right, now I wanna show you comping on a better example uh, with a couple of guitars because there I can show you what to do if you didn't have takes to layers enabled before you record it or if you just want to comp already existing audio material. This is incredibly easy to do in Studio One. So let me just hop over to my other song that I have opened in the background. We can just switch songs uh, back and forth seamlessly in Studio One as you know. And let's listen to this uh, drum groove that we have going on here. nice and fat. And I have a couple of guitar takes prepared for this and uh, we can just pre-listen them in the browser really quickly. As you can hear, very different flavors. All right, so let's say that I wanna get these four guitar performances that you see here over to my audio track and comp the perfect take out of all of these different performances. So how do we go about that? Especially since we didn't uh, get to use the record takes to layers option here in the uh, recording panel. Well, it's incredibly easy. First, we're gonna utilize our hotkey that we just mapped for add layer. 
So instead of having to right click every time going to layers, add layer, I can just hit T four times and I have all the layers prepared that I'm gonna need for my four guitar tracks. Now I can just drag them over, drop them on my layers, and now the next step would be to give them some very clear color coding and naming. This is gonna be very, very useful in order to avoid confusion down the line. So in order to decide on that, let me just solo this layer really quickly and listen to it in isolation. So to my ear, that's going to be the main take, meaning I will take most of my performance out of this single layer and the other ones are going to add for flavor. So let me call this one uh, the main take in this instance and also give that a very clear color, maybe green. And once I promote it, you see that it also um, took the name as well as the color. That's my main take. Now what I like to do is use the smart tool and listen to the performance very closely and uh, draw in ranges where I can see myself going for a different take than the main one. So right here, for instance, here, also this section, and maybe this section over here. All right. Now, before we start uh, cropping anything or uh, promoting any other layers, let's first listen to the other layers that we have in isolation. So this is clearly a rhythmic guitar. Next one. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely more sustained. And then we have a layer with some uh, stuttery, glitchy effects. Really, really cool. All right, so now I also like to use the audition tool, which I have on my secondary tool button that I can trigger with the Alt or Option key. And now I'm gonna scan for some nice glitches that I definitely wanna have. Okay, definitely gonna go for the one at the end. And if I wanna promote that, I can either just use the bracket tool like so, or I can go to the range that I've already split here in the event and just promote the stutter effects that way. This is why the color coding and naming was so important for us because it really makes the job easy here. We can also utilize the other hotkeys that we have assigned, replace event with previous or next layer, and work our way through the entire takes that way. So we can even comp without having the uh, layers expanded at all times, which really saves us a lot of space and also takes away some of our preconceptions of which take is better, right? So let's go ahead. See. I'm just promoting with this hotkey and that allows me to listen really, really quickly. Maybe I want to go for half and half here. Maybe something like this. Or maybe just exactly the other way around. Like And here I also want to go for something else. And now I'm gonna search for something here and you see how quickly it goes with the hotkeys. And notice how you don't hear any clicks whatsoever, no matter where I'm cutting into these waveforms. It's simply amazing. Yeah, and once I'm happy with this, I can just bounce this as a new file and just forget about the takes underneath. But should I ever need to make any corrections, I can just expand these layers and make these adjustments wherever necessary. So I think comping is such a great workflow in Studio One. Definitely try it out. And um, one more thing to note is maybe that if you have to adjust the crossfades, uh, manually at some point, you can always do so. We have a linear fade out, exponential or logarithmic, and we can even adjust it on a per bracket basis, as you can see, by just holding the Alt or Option key. 
All right, so I hope that you find this helpful and um, try out comping. It also works for instrument tracks, by the way, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Talk to you later, guys. Cheers.